In the last video um, we built this uh, animation. The red ball, when it gets over to the right hand side, stops dead and doesn't bounce. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how to make it change direction um, and bounce off uh, all four walls. So let's get back to the code. Um, the new position here is equal to the previous position plus one. Now this line actually means um, this. Uh, the new position equals the previous position plus the velocity times the time interval. Um, and we've just replaced the velocity times the time interval by one. What we really need to do is explicitly have velocity and time interval to be correct. So we'll try and write the equation like this. Um, the other one for velocity, which we we'll, won't do just yet, but we'll come on to later, uh, basically v equals u plus at is similar to the one above. The new velocity equals the previous velocity plus uh, the acceleration times time interval. But this is the one we're going to use now. So let's yes, just change the code. Um, so rather than having one, we want to introduce a term for velocity in the x direction times time interval. And we need to tell it what the velocity in the, in the x direction is. So let's put in a value for it. Um, let's put in 100. OK, so 100. Um, and that should uh, that should work now. Let's try it, save it. Come over here, reload it, and there we go, a bit quicker than before. But the same thing happens. Um, OK, so let's make it bounce when it hits the right-hand side. So if x gets to the right-hand side, not only do we want the position to, to um, come back to 380, just in case it goes above, but we want the velocity, vx, to be the opposite of what it was before. So if the velocity was positive here, then a minus sign is put in front of it and it becomes negative. That equal sign effective just means that the left hand side becomes equal to what was on the right. It's not a, not a mathematical expression. So if Vx was 100 here, then it becomes minus 100 as it goes through this loop. So let's try that, save it, and run it. Bounces on the right, and goes straight off on the left. So we need to make it now bounce on the left-hand side. So I'll just copy that code. And here we want to have, if x is less than, well, if I put, we want to have the radius, the same same thing as before. If the center of the ball is less than the radius, a radius distance from the edge, then we want it to bounce in the other direction. So let's try that. Bounces on the right. Bounces on the left. Okay, and it will keep doing that. So what they have to do now is make it bound. We want it to go um, vertically as well. Put in a y component. Notice that we've only done x at the moment. We've only done x position and um, x velocity, and we're only just only using the x position here. So let's put in a y and um, duplicate that, change it to y. Just make the make the y velocity smaller. Um, it's the same formula, but just for a different direction. Uh, 
Okay. And that should, well, that's part of the way. Let's have a look at what happens now. Save it, reload it. And now there's a Y component to the velocity. We made Y, um, Y was only equal to 10, not, um, whereas the X value of um, velocity was higher. And it goes straight past. So let's find out what's going on there. And um, what you need to do now is you need to put in some values for making it bounce um, on the Y, on the top edge and the bottom edge. So you might want to put in if Y is greater than well, the height of it was 200, uh, 300, so you want to make it 280. So I'll let you have a go at finishing the code, but make it bounce on all four walls.